So Uganda is among the countries that was trying to achieve a two-thirds reduction in child mortality. And like many of the countries in this region, it did not meet those goals. Infectious diseases, and, and in particular sepsis, which occurs when an infection leads to organ damage, is the most common cause of death for children in developing countries such as Uganda. What is generally not recognized is that as many children are dying after hospital discharge as during admission. And it's a tragedy when so many children are dying unnecessarily. We have been working primarily on trying to improve the outcomes of children after they're discharged. Whereas in developed countries, there is generally a fairly good safety net to capture the kids who become ill after discharge, that same safety net does not exist in places like Uganda. In fact, in Uganda, 1 in 20 children who are discharged die during that post-discharge period. That's as many as die during hospitalization. Over two-thirds of the children who die after discharge die at home. Most of these children have not received any follow-up care after discharge. They've essentially fallen through the cracks. Did I identify the high numbers of, of children we are getting worse off when few days or weeks after discharge in the communities there and a good number of them were eventually dying. We're in the middle of what we call our Smart Discharges project. Smart Discharges are meant to try to fill this gap. Our focus really is, is using prediction to guide our intervention. The majority of the children are discharged on the path to recovery actually, but also the, when a the child then gets ill, if a child did not recover fully, Many families think that they've tried the best that they could do. The child has not got well. There's no reason going back to another health facility. The health system is not strong enough to follow up every single child being discharged. There just is not enough capacity in the system. What we've done is we've done a lot of this work in prediction modeling. We can predict which child is vulnerable. You do not need to wait until discharge to, to be able to predict a child's probability of a bad outcome. We can do that at admission. This will allow us to engage the patient during their hospitalization and to make the appropriate plans for follow-up after they're discharged. At the point of admission, one of our discharge coordinators, our discharge nurses, sees the patient. And it's at this point that the initial interview takes place. We ask a series of questions on risk factors. We ask if they've been admitted recently, um, what kinds of diseases this child has. We do some measurements like oxygen saturation, respiratory rate, things like this. And it's these characteristics which allow us to give a risk score to that child. These characteristics can tell us if this child is going to be at high risk or at low risk of a bad outcome after discharge. With that information, we can then use that to bring them into the Smart Discharge program and give them the intervention that they need in order to have a good outcome. Because of the challenges that mothers face in accessing care at regional hospitals after discharge, the Smart Discharges program connects mothers to a health facility of their choice within their local communities. With this approach, mothers can complete their follow-up care quickly and cost-effectively. During this period, mothers will visit these facilities two or three times in the first couple of weeks after discharge. So the health workers will examine the child and will determine if the child is recovering as expected or if there's any warning signs to prompt the health worker to admit the child or to refer the child to ensure that the child gets the care that they need for a complete recovery. It's not reactive to a problem, um, but it's proactive. It's trying to catch a problem before the parent even recognizes that there's a problem. It's really closing that referral gap, linking parents at the point of discharge, keeping them in the health system, linking them with a nearby health center where they can get follow-up. It's the continuity of care, the process of linking children back to their community, linking caregivers back to care in their community that I think really is, is the key issue um, as to why smart dischargers can work. We've done a fair bit of work testing some of our risk prediction algorithms in frontline health workers and you know they can do that in just a few minutes. A few minutes can tell a health worker whether or not that child is a high risk or low risk. Um, the process is fairly straightforward. It begins at admission, yes, but it doesn't take much time between admission and discharge to fully implement a smart discharge. We have found that the kids who are at high risk have about a 1 in 10 chance of death over 6 months. And our research seems to suggest that we can reduce that by about 30%. This means that we would only need to intervene in 30 kids to save one life. So for 30 smart discharges, one life will be saved, uh, which is a pretty uh, impressive reduction in mortality. Mm -hmm.